11 p.m. JD, Tristan and I are climbing up Red Scree in the Lake District. It's an unbelievably clear night, no clouds at all. So we're hoping for a fantastic night sleep up there and a cloud inversion sunrise. <laughs> that's what we do, that's that the dream. The, that is the dream. <laughs> Every time we set off, that's what we've got in the back of our minds. I wish this thing could pick up Milky Way, because it looks fantastic. It incredible tonight. Let's have a bit of light to show you what we're climbing. Oh, there we go. That's how steep it is. That's why we do not want to start slipping. Let's turn this round. Oh, I want to make sure that's on my wrist. Yeah, I'm glad it's chilling out a little bit on this part. So where's this top you keep telling us about? <laughs> Is that it? Is that another full summit or we just... Look what I've just found. A very rare phenomenon called inside out footprints. See someone's boot prints higher than the ground that they were around. <laughs> that is weird. I presume someone has come along in soft snow, packed it down with their boots, and then the soft snow's blown away and left their packed down footprints. That looks cool, doesn't it? Oh man, I've got loads of snow on my boots. I just noticed. Good thing I've got socks on. Right, we are going to set up a tent in a relatively sheltered part. Just gone midnight. Hopefully, have a great view in about seven or eight hours. This is how we smooth out the ground underneath the tent. Put the ground sheet down, and I roll my muscular body all over it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. Cutting out blocks of ice, putting it down the side of the tent to the window and get underneath it. We can't use our ice axes because we're using them to pin the tent down it. That is one solid tent peg now. That is not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to pack the gaps in with some more snow and stuff. Should make it quite snug. It is 10 to 10. I've had the worst night's sleep of my life, I think, <laughs> because I didn't actually sleep. A combination of Jonathan snoring like an old man in his death throes, because <laughs> he's got a throat infection at the moment. Tristan getting up for a piss every 12 seconds. <laughs> oh, my boots and socks and everything that was wet from last night froze solid, so now I'm trying to thaw them out with the, the heat from my body, which isn't very much. As you can see, Incredible views. Sleeping bag, it's uh, right off now, I think. You know, if you hold it up to the light, you can see cold spots. Yeah, There's yeah. no warm spots. The, the down is all clumped up in every single yeah, little square. Like it's hard, it does anything. <laughs> okay, I'm going to eat a Snickers and a, and a tomato for my breakfast. <laughs> Storming it, we might go a bit further and come onto the hell room. And then where's the car? And we have to go to oh, Sunday morning. The car is back here. Yeah. Oh, that's a so, walk. Oh, well. Oh, uh, yellow snow. Isn't that good luck if you eat it? Nope. <laughs> Everything packed up. 10.36 in the morning. And the valley's opening up for us. How many kilometres is it to the target? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take us about three days. <laughs> Walking in these snow drifts does my head in. But with views like that, I don't mind. So let's do it. Mr. Sunshine. We've got snow clouds. We've got blue sky. We've got the sun breaking through the clouds. Shining on this completely clear valley. Bit of everything. Tristan is a jumping for joy. I am living the dream. <laughs> Some deep drifts.
<laughs> abort, abort. <laughs> Fly away. Oh yes, that was a very slow and hard slog up there in deep snow. Came all the way down that, and all the way up here. Kind of worth it though. Oh, good work boys. All right, I, I'm sweating all over. Oh, I can't stop looking at that. Ten past one. Looks like it's five o'clock or something. I don't know the lakes very well. I know Snowdonia very well, but not Lake District. Need to get to know it more. Maybe even one day run the Bob Graham round. That might be a pipe dream. 75 miles, 42 mountains. 24 hours non-stop running 24 hours not sure i'm up for that just yet this is the summit of fairfields and what a summit it is it's very exposed up here see sunday you get a sledge and go down there you would reach terminal velocity <laughs> the size of that crow We do have crampons, but we don't need them yet. We might give it some uh, roll mat action. <laughs> Make sure I don't fall on this thing. Quite the adrenaline rush I was looking for, but never mind. Dolly wagon or something. Oh, the yeah, but it's the, it's the, how, it's the range. Yeah. That's what I mean, you had to push this in that tent. The inner of this tent is drenched. So we're just setting it up and trying to let it air out a bit. <sighs> Tristan Dornfell, down by the car. Making themselves hot drinks. So I've come up here to see if I can see the sunset. <sighs> now to head back down. Snow is far too deep and soft to slide down, which is annoying. <sighs> so I'll run down instead. Oh, this is where I slid down last time, maybe. Maybe this will be I really picked up speed fast then. I was about to hit that rock, so I had to slide off. Whoa! Home sweet home! Love being next to this tarn and the sound of the water. 
Very relaxing, very protected from the wind as well. Let's do the tent. These gloves are neoprene, which means they are waterproof. Well, that means the moisture inside them doesn't escape. But that's all right, because you warm it up, like with a wetsuit. Problem is when you take it off, the glove off, the moisture inside freezes. Then you put the glove back on. <laughs> and for about 10 minutes, your hands are like, ah. Mine are exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, awful. so you just, to be warm, you have to be in a constant state of dampness. Because they never really dry out. My socks are the same. Is it this way around? Yeah, it's like window on this side. Ten past four. Let's be asleep by five, yeah? Next <laughs> <laughs> up window. It might be easier all the way around this way. It might be easier though with It's quarter past eight in the morning. I've been in my sleeping bag since sure five PM, which is fifteen hours ago. My sleeping bag is a wrap. I don't know where the, the feathers have gone that were meant to be in it, but it's essentially just an, a nylon bag. For the last few hours, it's been pissing it down out there. Windy ice rain are the worst conditions for packing when there's three of you in a tiny tent. You've got to arrange all this. <laughs> got to so bad. Get, everything's difficult. Then put on cold, wet clothes from yesterday. So what is the... Fastest, most direct route to get, the hell out to get the hell out of here to the valley so we can just walk along the road and get back to the car. Um. Why is it always a freaking storm on the last day? Well, better it on the last morning than yesterday or <laughs> the first night. That would have really set us up miserably. <laughs> that wind is <laughs> Let's go pack down the tent. Beautiful day! <laughs> Wildcamping camping the Lake District in winter, everybody. I recommend it to you and your loved ones, especially young children and elderly people. Tristan, I heard you say something. What's going on in there? I can't see anything that should be in here, but when you take your kit out, just check, double check the tent. I shall double check the tent. Triple check it even. I see, I see stepping stones. No thanks. Let's go down rather than up. Right, the battery runs out, I'm not able to film anymore. We're heading five miles down this pass. In these conditions, my name's Brave Dave. Hope you've enjoyed our little Lake District winter jaunt. Thanks very much for watching. Way below the snow line now, which is nice. Although when we get to the valley, we'll actually be climbing back up towards the snow. Quarter past one. This might be the best view we've seen all weekend. There's the car. <laughs> First we walk down that valley, which is fair enough. We need to walk back up another one along the road. That's felt like we've been doing that for about four hours. I don't even think I'd do that again if someone paid me, because that was just a slog. Really steep, not very interesting. Always looking out for traffic. There's a red scree we climbed two nights ago. Are you a bit nervous about driving out of here? I can barely stand on this. Shall I chip some out with my axe? 